Ich wurde 1933 Präsident der von mir gegründeten Akademie für deutsches Recht. Ich war Reichsführer des Nationalsozialistischen Juristenbundes, der später den Titel eines Rechtsfahrerbundes bekam. Ich war 1933 und 1934 Reichskommissar für die Justiz. Und ich wurde 1939 Generalgouverneur des Generalgouvernements in Krakau. John Dunlop, after the war, your father, Weary Dunlop, was called on to identify Japanese officers to be prosecuted for war crimes. What did he do? He said, look, um, you know, I was in one of the camps and um, I was called by the camp commander to come to his uh, hut, whereupon I was given whiskey and cigarettes. I wasn't sure what this was all about. And the camp commander was um, a member of the Kempitai, the, the uh, Japanese military police. And he said, this, uh, this business, um, very nasty business, this. Um, not good, not good. But he said, we of the Kempitai, uh, we do but our duty. And so, after the liberation, um, yes, he, he, I think he went to, uh, went to Japan where these trials were held. And he, he told me with great amusement and great pride how he, he went along the line. And I tapped this fellow on the shoulder and said, yes, this man, he's, uh, he's guilty. This man here, yes, he's also guilty. And he said, I came to this fellow and I looked in his eyes and I recognised him. The man with the whiskey. And he looked at, looked at him and he winked at him. And then he turned back to the adjutant, adjutant and said, I do not know this man. Why do you think he did that? He believed that in everyone there's a shred of decency somewhere and that if they're, if they're encouraged to, to think about what they should be doing, that in the end they will do it. Tell us very briefly about the kinds of things your father would do that sort of reflected what he'd been through. I mean, there were, there were some odd rituals he had with you and your brother. Can you describe oh, some Oh, you of mean after the war? Yeah, after the war. <laughs> well, it was the Christmas ritual. That was a good one. Get in the car, boys. So we'd get in the car and we'd drive out till he found a, 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 a sort of a, a field and then he'd park the car, we'd all get out and out of the back of the car, he'd, he'd get this sword that he had uh, brought back from, uh, you know, from Thailand. And he would um, w walk out into the field and, and then we realised what it was all about. It's about thistles. So he wanted thistles to put on the door as Christmas decorations at home. And so, so what would he... a thistle here. And he stands and he goes, Hoyo! <laughs> we thought it was a bit over the top. Why do you think he did it? Look, I've got no idea. I don't know, some sort of cleansing, maybe? Hmm? I mean, it was very humorous anyway. Still, Hidetoshi... got the, still got the sword. 
Hidetoshi, what, what do you think listening to those stories?たぶんあの日本人の考え方とか価値観はなかなか西洋の人には分かりづらいところは正直あると思います。うん。and でも、それは日本人すべてではないということだけが私は言いたかっただけです。例えば、うちの私の総祖父が二ついいことをやってまして、一つが二万人以上のユダヤ人を作ったということと、大東亜会議という非白人以外の国際会議を初めてやったのは